So here we are for part two of rigging an Aries Pond cat boat. To reintroduce myself, I'm Tony Davis, owner of Aries Pond Boatyard. And thanks to my brother-in-law, Rory, for doing these films. So it's taken us a year to get back here. Um, but, you know, good things take time. And if you see ice, uh, or you think you're seeing ice, you are seeing ice. Uh, we had a, a freeze last night. We left off with running the rigging, so we're going to pick up with just a couple of reminders uh, on attaching the hoops and pulling the halyards out into place, and then we will fit the sail and raise the sail and uh, go through those details, and that will conclude this uh, rigging of the Aries Pond cat boat uh, video. So to get started, where we left off, first we launched the boat because uh, if it's windy, which it's going to be today, uh, it would be safer to have it in the water while we're putting the sail on. So if we were on the trailer on land and we weren't directly into the wind, possibly a gust could uh, make it dangerous on the trailer. So it's safer to put the boat in the water and rig the sail. First video attaching the sail, and um, those were the uh, uh, Pert Lowell uh, bronze fittings. In this case, uh, not a bad example of sometimes you'll see uh, shackles seized onto the hoop. So pretty straightforward in this case. And there's on the Aries Pond cats, there are five uh, hoops, five attachments. We went over the peril beads, uh, but just a reminder to make sure it's a necklace shape. There's a lot of slack in the peril beads when you attach them to the gaff jaws um, because when we peek up we might peek so hard that we'll pin the peril beads against the mast and and possibly split the jaws so we've attached the hoops we've attached the tack to the boom here and the head of the sail on the gaff so next we're going to uh, review the uh, uh, lining up the halyards into their proper spot. We did that at the end of the last video after we stepped the mast and put the wedges in. So first is the throat halyard, Schaefer block attached to the top end of the forward end of the gaff. And it starts on a becket up aloft and comes down through your shiv back up. And back down, starboard side, there's a shiv that runs the halyard aft. So that one is secure. Now we're going to go to the peak halyard, the one that's just moving, the very top eye bolt. It attaches to the end of the gaff. So these shackles, if they're shackles and not pins, cotton pins or clevis pins, you want to get to your tool bag and be sure these are tightened up. These shackles that are going aloft when you're sailing want to be secure and it's not a bad idea to tape them shut or put a cotter pin and secure it to the main part of the shackle to ensure it won't come loose during the season. And a bowling is fine and sometimes just going not using a shackle at all and just going through the pad eye and tying a bowling is is your best bet. So that's the end of the gaff for the peak halyard. Now we want to attach to the gaff saddle, which is a, in some cases it's rope, in some cases it's wire, and it has sometimes it has a bridle on it, sometimes it has a shackle and it runs. On these small boats, the shackle is fine. Um, there's just not enough sail area to create enough tension to make it not work properly. On larger cat boats, you, you'd want this type of saddle here or bridle here where you can, where it will run free. So we're going to attach that. We're 
and look aloft to make sure there are no twists. And that's nice and straight. We call it fair lead. And we grab our pliers. We talked about making sure we always have our tool bag with the tools we went over in the first edition of this how to rig a cat boat. So then we'll find the leading edge of our peak halyard. And so we're going to run our traditionally the peak halyard is always the outboard uh, shiv. Now we're going to remember now to put our safety knot at the end of our line the end of our peak halyard and throat halyard. So if this halyard got away with it, got away from us out at, while we're setting sail, it won't run right up through the blocks and lose the line. It'll stop at our deck fitting. So that's an important thing to remember is putting these stop knots at the end of the throat and peak and topping lift topping lift we ran earlier it runs it's the only line on the port side you can uh, see it's single block here and then runs up through what we call a cheek block the top of the mast okay to set the topping lift so it's not something we don't, we aren't constantly adjusting while we're under sail, especially on just a nice, easy day sail. Um, we'll, we'll take the boom out of the boom crutch and the boom crutch back, and then we'll set the topping lift halfway from the, the combing to the, to the top of the boom crutch. So we're right here at the halfway point, and I've got the topping lift in my right hand, and then I'm going to go forward and cleat it there. So the point being, it's not too loose and it's not too tight when we're under sail. So now, mine's under the boom. So now I'm in the boom crutch. I've got slack in the topping lift, but when I go to raise the sail, it's not going to drop down and hit hit the boat. And when I'm under sail, it's not going to be so tight that it's going to put a crease in the sail. So uh, most of the Aries Pond cat boats have bronze sail track, and it's very straightforward. You just start at the forward end and you slide the cars on and you work the sail out starting with the boom first so all the sail will be laying over here to starboard um, because it's not attached to the gaff yet but you're going to slide them on work them down the boom to the outhaul position and on any smaller boats you can just pull it tight by hand and secure it. On the older sails, like this one, which by the way is an Aries Pond Sailing School 14, gets a lot of use. Um, we're going to pull it pretty tight, really pretty snug, because the sail is stretched out. It's, it's, uh, Seeing is close to the end of its uh, nine, ten year life expectancy. And, uh, but if it was a newer sail, we would just make it snug because the sail is stretching. If we make it too tight, it'll be too flat and not create the pocket we want in a cat boat to going to win with.
So just a couple of half pictures. And then during the season, if it comes, if you see wrinkles, you're going to tighten that. And if it's too tight, you'll loosen it. So we've secured the foot of the sail from the uh, gooseneck to the outhaul. Now we want to attach the sail to the gaff. So we're going to pull up on the pink halyard, and we have a sail tie here. It gives us some room between the boom and the gaff and keeps it secure from heading out away from us from the gust of wind. And so we'll get it that snug and we'll cleat that off. And then we'll start attaching the, the sail. We've already secured this end here and then we start our lacing. Now, some of the Aries 14s, the earlier ones, from the 70s, uh, well, not so much the 70s, but the 80s and 90s models have sail track on the gaff. So it's the same procedure that we did here on the foot of the sail. But in the 2000s and in the 1970 models, it's a laced uh, gaff. And the reason we switched back is it allows the sailor to perfect the, or get as close to perfection on the set of the sail, because it, it, you can control the wrinkles easier with uh, the lacing versus a traditional outhaul situation on the car. On the foot of the sail, it's pretty straightforward. The gaff is where the, all the action is, so to speak and where the wrinkles can occur the most. So that's why we prefer the lacing so we can make the adjustments, especially on a new boat and as the sail stretches and it finds its place, you have more ability to tune the sail again with the, with the lacing versus just an outhaul. There are many ways to lace a sail on a gaff rig boat. What we like to do at Aries Pond is this system, but you can do a barber pole, which you'll, you'll see or hear or read about the system where it's just the line goes over the gaff and back through the grommet and then back over. So it looks like the striping on a barber pole. The system we like to use here for lacing a sail at Aries Pond is to do individual like hoops at each grommet. We find it easier to adjust when we want to, as I was talking about earlier, as the sail stretches. Okay, we're lacing on the sail using uh, the Aries Pond method and, and very traditional method, been done this way for years on, on the large gaff rig boats, the small gaff rig boats. So we're going to, our lace line starts up at the head of the gaff, comes through. Side to port side and through. So our sail is now laced and we're going to do our outhaul. We started our lacing with a bowline at the front end and then continued this lacing system all the way down to the outhaul. And again, being a small boat, 14 foot, 150 square feet of sail, no big deal to just put an outhaul system in that's part of your lacing, but you can certainly tie off your lacing to this other grommet here and then have a separate outhaul, whatever you prefer 
again, it's a matter of being able to easily make adjustments during the season if you're getting wrinkles. We'll go over wrinkles at the end here when we set the sail. This is an older sail, so we're pulling it pretty tight to make it snug because the sail has been stretched out over the years. If it was a newer sail, we would just have it snug. So we've, we've got our sail attached, we've got our halyards led, and we want to make sure our battens are in the sail. So this batten pocket, batten slides in. And then you push and there's a little spring back. You push in and then it springs back and locks in place. And you have your telltales typically near the batten pocket. So we'll just do a little temporary furl here. We'll do a more proper furl in the end. Quick review before hoisting the sail. We've got our topping lift set. We have our peak halyard, our throat halyard, our main sheet attaches more farther forward on the boom with no engine. It can attach all the way out to the end of the boom. Come to a block, runs forward to a block here, and then down to whatever your uh, belay or, or a fastening or securing the main sheet could be. In this case, there's a Harkin swivel cam and a backup four hole bronze cleat. A lot of the boats have a Harkin main sheet system, which is secured to a bronze bracket on the aft end of the uh, centerboard trunk. This is an Aries Pond sailing school boat, as I said earlier. So when we're teaching kids, we want them to use the cleat. We don't want them to be using this uh, jam system here because they're not truly learning how to hold the main sheet and get the feel for it when under sail. So um, when we raise the sail, we want to try to be into the wind. Um, so we've moved, we've uh, flipped the boat around because the wind is now is calm again, but it's coming was coming northwest. Now it's switched to the southwest. So we're pretty much straight into the wind. Um, to check our work for raising the sail. So we're ready to raise the sail. For those of you who sail with me, you'll hear me always saying if I'm teaching, lead with the peak. That's, this is what I mean. Raise the peak halyard. So it's about a 45 degree angle to the mast. And then on these smaller boats, you can, on the 14s, you can pull the two halyards together, being sure that the gaff the head of the gaff is on the starboard side of the top of the one. And you can start pulling them together, leading with the peak. Here's an example of just leading with the peak here to get a little angle and then pulling together. Now the throat is going to become secure taut first. Don't yank on it. Just Make sure it's taut. We got plenty of time to set the sail once we're free of the mooring. And we're gonna leave the peak halyard. We're gonna leave the peak halyard free. And then we're gonna toss the mooring. But here is a dock example at the dock. We will do it right now. I'll finish pulling up the peak halyard. Just snug till I see, just start to see a wrinkle from the head of the gaff down to the tack. Okay, just when I see a wrinkle, not a big wrinkle, just a little bit of a wrinkle right there. I want to organize my halyards as I'm sailing, drifting away from the mooring or my crew members doing it, but we want to be sure these halyards are properly secured and not 
in the case we have to lower the sail quickly getting tangled up in each other. So I'll do a coil, reach through, and hang it. On the peak halyard, if it's a windy day, I will not do a lock on the cleat. That's a lock. And especially always with kids who are learning, I never do a lock. I just do a wrap like that. And then I come through and I'll oops, and I'll hang it. That way, if we're getting hit with gusts, the sail will come loose. Or if it's a young child learning how to sail and I ask them to ease, or if they want, if I'm teaching, they can release the peak halyard quicker and that lock isn't getting tighter in gusty conditions. It's fine on the topping lift and on the throat, but this peak halyard is our gas pedal. And if we need to slow down quickly in gusty conditions, we need to release that peak halyard quickly. So we're free of the mooring, our sail is set, our centerboard is down, and we're underway. And we're looking up at the sail, and we see a really nice flat sail with no wrinkles. There are just a few little wrinkles up at the top. We could try to fuss with those with our lacing, but overall I'm, I'm really pleased with the look of the sail. So, we're ready to lower the sail. We can put the boom in the boom crutch. And then we ease the peak halyard. And we want to use the weight of the gaff to help the whole sail come down evenly. So we get the, the gaff to about 90 to the mass and all that weight now perpendicular will allow the sail to come down evenly. You don't want to dip the gaff. You don't want to get it down the end of the gaff facing down and then she won't come down evenly. And I clean it off so the, the gaff is maybe an inch or two above the boom. And I'll cleat a nice secure cleat so we're putting her away. Make sure we've got our sail ties handy. Some people put them around their neck on a bigger boat. So they're all ready to go. And grab the sail aft, back here by the tiller. And we pull the sail and bag it inside itself. You're right-handed, you typically do it on the starboard side. And I'm holding my left hand a good portion of the lower part of the sail. And she just essentially self-furls. And I take a sail tie. You can go between the sail and around the gaff back around like that. You can do it you can do any way you want. Our next uh, segment will be on going for a sale and putting a reef in and when we put a reef in and how we tie a reef in. So thanks again to, to Rory Kelleher for doing this film and I hope uh, it helps. <laughs>